all 15,000 of us, that means me too, we all gotta sit down for a second. Sit down, just have a moment. You can do it. So I just wanted to say that um, as long as I can remember, people have been coming up to me and saying, you know, everything happens for a reason. And something I want to talk to you guys about is that's fucking bullshit. Everything happens because you make a fucking decision and make shit happen in your life, right? So note the word decision, because I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson on Motley Crue. But we're going to go all the way back to December of 1980. I was a struggling musician. You weren't even born yet, dude. I like that guy, I was cheers. So, struggling musician, Los Angeles, California, not unlike a, a lot of other musicians, except for, for me personally, I thought I had everything that I wanted. I came from Jerome, Idaho, population 4,000 people, and I made a decision to get on a Greyhound bus, go all the way to fucking Hollywood, and I was finally in a fucking rock and roll band. Except that band was not Motley Crue, so, you know, I didn't know Motley Crue would ever even exist, and I was just struggling and playing, and one day I looked at my band, and I have no idea why I did, and I'm glad that I did, because you guys wouldn't be here, and we wouldn't be up here, is I just looked at the guys in the band, and I said, I'm sorry guys, but I quit. And I started walking home, and I thought to myself, as I was walking, and I do mean walking, because I didn't have a car, I didn't have a job, I didn't have any money, and now I didn't even have a band. I thought, there's got to be at least three other guys in Los Angeles that wants to reach right into the fucking heart of the music industry, rip that fucking thing out, and throw it on the floor, and make some fucking history. Now I'm going to tell you, I didn't know if they existed, I didn't know what they looked like, I had no idea what I was doing, but I just trusted my fucking instinct. And on a Thursday night, that's how long ago it was, I can't even remember what night it was, but it was a Thursday night, I hitched a ride to Hollywood, California, to a club called the Starwood, and I walked through the back door of the club, just like this, and I looked up on the stage, and there he was, sitting behind his drums. He was 17 years old. He was skinny, he was scrawny, he was 